What's the new way of importing resources into Terraform? Organizations always have infrastructure already deployed before adopting Terraform. The number one question I get in my Terraform training sessions is how to import existing infrastructure to be managed by Terraform. People are overwhelmed by the process, unsure what config to write, and worried about breaking something. In this video, I'll show you the newer method of importing, which is not so new anymore, but not everyone is aware of it. This is the import block with auto-generated config method. The auto-generated config is still experimental, but works quite well in many situations. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the new Terraform import method with import block with config generation. So the normal Terraform apply scenario is that you have really three things to keep in mind. First, we've got the configuration that you're going to write. So the Terraform config files. Then we have the state, the Terraform state. And this is what Terraform knows about the infrastructure in the real world. And then, of course, the infrastructure that is already in the real world or is going to get provisioned. So the normal apply scenario is that you go ahead and write your Terraform code or config, and then you run Terraform apply, and that will create a state file and then create the real infrastructure in the real world. So that's our normal Terraform apply scenario. Now, if we have an existing set of infrastructure in the real world, and now we want to import that into Terraform to become under Terraform's management so we can modify it, add things to it, or even destroy it, the old approach or traditional approach was to use the Terraform import command. So you'd run the Terraform import command. And what that will do is it will bring in the real world infrastructure into a state file that Terraform understands. However, the challenge is that you need to have a configuration file here. Otherwise, if you run Terraform apply in this state, this will actually go out and delete the infrastructure in the real world and remove the state file. Why? Because Terraform is a declarative language and here you have no config. So you're declaring to Terraform that you don't want anything. So it's going to go out and delete as part of its normal operation. So this was pretty risky and scary at the same time. And I covered this in a video, which you will find in the description of this video where I talk about the gotchas in using the Terraform import command. So now with the new Terraform block with the ability to generate the config, this is the new Terraform import scenario on the screen for you. In this case, once again, we have infrastructure that's in the real world that we want to bring into the state file. But as part of your config, you would write an import block like this. And it has a two and an ID. So in our example here, we are going to import into the upcloud server imported VM resource, and we will add an ID. So you'd have to go into upcloud in this case and grab the ID of that VM and fill it here. And once you have this in your config, you can run the command Terraform plan with the flag generate config out and then give it a name for the file and you'll notice it ends in the .tf extension. So when you run the Terraform plan command, it's going to generate a generated underscore config.tf as we specified here. And it will generate configuration based on what it knows in the real world for us. Now it isn't bulletproof. You will sometimes have to tweak it and we'll see that in the demo, but it's definitely a welcomed addition where you don't have to go and figure out yourself what the config should look like. Once you've done that, you can run the Terraform apply command. And what that will do, it will at this point add the state file for us. And now we've completely imported our real world infrastructure into our state file. And with that, let's jump into a demo and see how this works. For our demo, I'm going to use upcloud, but of course this will work with any cloud provider or any vendor you're working with that has the ability to import into Terraform. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to use UpCloud and UpCloud is the sponsor of this video. So thank you to UpCloud for that. And if you want to get a seven day trial with 50 euros free credits, use my promo code TechN850 and I'll have that in the description of this video. 
So right now I have a server in UpCloud, as you see here, a Ubuntu machine, and this I created outside of Terraform, and I'll show you how I'm going to import that into Terraform using the new way of importing. All right, so we've got this right here. I'm gonna pull up my cursor IDE, and from here, I have a readme file that you can go through and see everything that I'm talking about today, basically, and redo this for yourself. The prerequisites really is we need Terraform installed with version higher than 1.5.0. You'll need the UpCloud account API credentials. So when you sign up to UpCloud, you're gonna get a username and a password, and you need to just export the username and password like here if you're running Terraform on a Linux or on a Mac. For Windows PowerShell, you would do it this way. And of course, an existing VM created, which was what I just showed you in the UpCloud UI. All right, so with that, we can easily now just make sure that we run Terraform init to initialize everything. And by the way, I've already exported my username and password. I'm not showing that to you right here because I've already done that in this shell environment. So Terraform init, and then if you want to run Terraform plan real quick, you'll see no changes. The reason for that is I have a main.tf file and nothing else. So if I show you the main.tf, I'm showing you that I'm, I have the required providers, in this case is UpCloud, and the provider block UpCloud, and I don't have anything here in the import side of things. So I'm going to uncomment this block, import block, and now, as you can see, I'm going to import this into a resource called upcloud underscore server dot imported dot VM. And how did I get this? Well, I go to the documentation as you would probably do, depending on what vendor you're working with. So in this case, the upcloud server resource. So if you go under servers, resources, upcloud server, and usually the imports are always at the bottom of whatever resource you're looking for. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we've got the import side of things here. Import is supported using the following syntax. So if you run Terraform import, that's the old way of doing things. From a import block perspective, it's the same idea. So we grab upcloud underscore server dot example underscore server, for example, here. And then we need the ID to be put as well. So now we got to go into the UI and grab the ID of that VM so we can replace this. Let's go back in here. And if we look here, you'll see the unique identifier here. So we can grab that, copy that, and go back in our main.tf and replace that like this. And now if we run Terraform plan, let's clear this first and run Terraform plan, you get this error. And notice this is new. Of course, this is the new way of doing things. Terraform encountered an error while generating this plan. The import block target does not exist. The target for the given import block does not exist. If you wish to automatically generate config for this resource, use the dash generate config out option within Terraform plan. Otherwise, make sure the target resource exists within your configuration. All right. So if we were want to create it ourselves, then you would have to go into the documentation and take a look here at what the upcloud server looks like, look at a few examples, go in and grab everything as it is right now in the console. So you need to get the right host name, the zone, the plan. If there was a template, the network interfaces, all that. So you'd have to go in to the UI here and grab all that information. And a lot of it is not easy to understand. So host name is right here. Location is here, but you don't see the plan, for example, in the UI, right? So that's why if we use the generate flag here, as we'll see in just a second, it makes life a lot easier for us. So let's run Terraform plan dash generate config output, and we're going to send this to a file called generated.tf. Hit enter. Notice that the generated.tf file got created, but we have a few errors. And your mileage will vary depending on what provider you're using. So let's first see what happened here. This generated.tf file created a resource for us, upcloud server, imported on underscore VM as we wanted. And you can see here a bunch of things that got added for us for free, 
right? And a bunch of network interfaces, storage devices, all that looks great. Now, if you want to run Terraform plan, you see that same error that we saw, but it gives us a little bit more details. So for example, it says attribute CPU cannot be specified when plan is specified and memory cannot be specified when plan is specified. So this is specific to this particular provider. And basically it's telling us since we've defined the plan here and as part of the plan, it defines the CPU and memory. We can't have both CPU memory and plan. So let's remove CPU. Let's remove memory and let's clear and run Terraform plan again. And there you go. Now you see that there is one to import zero to add zero to change zero to destroy. Right. And if you go up there, you can see that we're going to be importing our server nicely like that. So the next step now is to run Terraform apply. Terraform apply. And of course it asks us the same thing with a prompt. So we're going to say yes and apply complete resource one imported and zero added, zero changed, zero destroyed. So if you want to take a look at the state file, Terraform state list, you can see now that the server, the VM is in fact imported into our state file very nicely. At this point, it's up to you whether to leave the generated .tf file as is like this, or if you prefer to grab that and remove it and put it into your main.tf file. That's really up to you. Moreover, the import block is optional, whether to leave it or take it out, remove it completely. It doesn't matter. Some organizations like to leave the import blocks here to remind them what has been imported into Terraform. So we can go ahead and remove this generated.tf file. If you run Terraform plan again, You'll see no changes. Your infrastructure matches the configuration. That's perfect. That means we've successfully imported that particular resource into our state file and it's now managed by Terraform. And to prove that to you, I'm going to run Terraform destroy. So there you go. It's going to destroy one resource and it shows you it's the upcloud server resource. So go ahead and say yes. And just like that, destroy completed. Let's go back to the UI to take a look. So back to the server list and you see the server has been removed. So that's great. I just want to show you one last thing and this is only specific to UpCloud. And I wish all clouds had this where you have this ability to export into Terraform whatever infrastructure you have, right? So you can actually go in here and specify what resources you want to import into Terraform. And you'll notice one thing that we haven't imported and that's the storage device that we should have imported as well as the server, because now when we deleted the server, we were left with a storage device still inside of UpCloud. So just to show you what this looks like, if you go ahead and click next, it will show you the actual Terraform configuration that you can use to import that into Terraform, right? So once you create this configuration like that, then you can actually use the old method with the Terraform import block because you've already generated the Terraform config. Or if you choose, you can still use the import block within your Terraform code and go through the Terraform plan, which is my preferred method over going through the old way of doing things. Today, you learned a new way to import resources into Terraform without all the scary risks. Instead of writing all the config yourself, we use the import block with auto-generated config. I showed you how this method works with a demo using UpCloud, where we safely imported a real VM. This makes managing your existing infrastructure much easier. Thanks for watching.